so this is Nate's story again, and uh, today I'm gonna talk about my strawberries, and I'm gonna take one of the towers down here, uh, the one in the back, right back there, because um, I've got a spider mite uh, outbreak on that particular tower, and I'm gonna take it out and basically show you what the roots look like, and uh, show you what the plants look like. But these uh, plants were planted on June 18th in 2010 and uh, they were planted in my zip grow towers and um, you know if you're planting outside it usually takes a good year for strawberries to get established uh, before they start bearing and uh, these little guys started flowering immediately. I pinched flowers for about three weeks and about two weeks after that um, they started producing fruit so they started uh, basically producing fruit in mid-July, and they produced uh, they produced solid up until now. They kind of had a boom, and now they're they kind of plateaued out. Uh, the tower is giving me about a tenth of a pound of strawberries a day. This is what my strawberries look like from uh, the, along the tops of the towers, and I'm standing right in front of a fan here, so I hope that uh, doesn't cause any problems with hearing me. But essentially, you see these towers are hung here. Uh, they're hung from the forward hole. So that gives us, um, basically it leans the towers backwards a little bit. I'm working on uh, another design that's gonna lean these towers back even further for folks that wanna do hanging setups. Uh, you see I'm using essentially electrical conduit here. Um, that is attached to the superstructure. And uh, I'm using just cheap old, um, they're rated at about 200 to 300 pounds, these pipe clamps here. And uh, holding up just regular uh, black pipe, which I'm hanging my towers from. So for those of you unfamiliar with aquaponics, what I've got here is, is towers, aquaponic towers, and they're basically processing the wastewater from an aquacultural system in the tanks below it. So these are my baby tilapia in one of my tanks, and you can see how excited they are. They think they're going to get fed. I'll feed them in a little bit. They will literally jump out of the water trying to <laughs> bite your fingers. Um, so they're growing in these tanks, and I have common carp and a couple of goldfish in this tank over here. And uh, believe it or not, this water is actually really clear. It's shaded, so it's hard to see. but. Um, it was disgusting. It was an aquaculture tank before I put the towers in, and uh, they've really cleaned the water. For these towers over here, uh, you see they extend out from my tank a bit. Um, so what I do is I use this uh, four-inch gutter. It fits it perfectly. Um, these pipes just sit in this gutter and drain down into there. And you can see there's a little bit of algae in here, but it's not really a problem. Um, as the system matures, it stays about just, just about like that. And I've got snails, as everyone who does this does. Um, there are some snails in these systems, and they uh, keep the algae under control. The snails, in turn, are uh, delicious food for your tilapia. They will eat snails up. So this is the finished product. Um, I just took this tower down. Um, they're, the nice thing about these towers is that they're really modular. You can take them down, move them around. They're, they're not like a gravel grow bed or a grow bed full of like a heavy media or something. It's pretty easy to pick these things up and uh, pick them up and put them down. So I've harvested my strawberries right there. Not a whole lot, but you know, I'm kind of a stickler for keeping track of all my numbers and making sure that I'm being accurate and reporting what I'm getting from these things. So I started cutting these plants out and uh, you can see how good and healthy those crowns are when you cut across them. Uh, with these kind of plants you can end up with crown rot um, and when you have crown rot these will be kind of a rose or a red color. Uh, you'll see the actual infection there, you know, is kind of a red color a lot of the time. And all these ones I'm cutting, you see, are, are a pretty good, healthy color. 
but I wanted to show you the size of the crowns you end up with um, after just a couple of months in the system. This is the size of the crowd, uh, the crown that you end up having there. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, on these plants um, how big that gets. These plants just get um, just monstrous. I mean, some of them look like, uh, I mean, that crown is just huge. It's as big around as my fist, bigger on the other side. Um, so the, the strawberries really do pretty darn good. I was, I was real surprised when I threw them in there and they didn't die right off the bat. It was my uh, first experiment with strawberries and I really didn't expect them to survive but they just, they not only survived, they cranked. And uh, in about 16 square feet I was producing in a matter of weeks um, some really awesome numbers as far as strawberries go. So I'm going to put those together and do a little statistical analysis on it and figure out what, what was going on there and hopefully taking this tower out doesn't screw it up too much. Um, as far as I can see, the production's hit a plateau lately, so hopefully um, I can project, you know, offer tentative projections as to what, you know, you could do with these over the course of a couple years. But like I said, I don't got a couple years and I'm exhausted just hand pollinating these things and doing all that. I'm not a good bug, so um, I'll uh, take the rest of these plants off and I uh, just wanted to show you the size of these crowns um, before I, <laughs> oh it's a monster, I love it, uh, just a big old beefcake, you got stems splitting, they're just so excited to be alive. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll take the rest of these plants off and, um, and uh, show, you, show you what the shorn tower looks like. So here's the two inserts and they're in the order that they came out here. Um, just kind of a detailed look at the growth habit. Uh, we've got pretty healthy worm populations there and there. Uh, you, so long as you can see, you know, there's a pretty big one there hiding. Um, so long as you can see uh, lots of worms in your media when you pull them out, um, you know that your population is in pretty good shape. There goes another one. <laughs> and you will end up with worms on your um, bench if you do this. So I guess just grab them. <laughs> grab them as they escape. And uh, hopefully you don't lose, lose too many of these guys. But uh, they worm their way in that media pretty quick to try and get away from the sunlight. So if you watch him, he'll, he'll take off pretty quick. And they make their way through the media real nice and easy. Uh, they really like it. So that's that. I'm going to tear this open here and show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, basically, this was folded over like this and I just opened it up. Um, what you end up with is it, it shows you kind of how that, the, that root material was incorporated leaning back. You want to make sure when you put those roots in you're, you're pulling your insert in like this and those two halves are coming together. You want to drop the bottom of the roots in, in uh, at the bottom so they, they chase uh, they chase that insert into the tower uh, quicker than the crown. And what that does is it, it gives you kind of an inclined root angle there. And what it means is as the water comes trickling down through this media, when it hits those roots, it has a tendency to dribble down to the back. And that's what we see here is that water dribbles down through the media and is always being kind of moved backwards by those roots. Um, and then also what you see is those roots continue um, when they go in, you know, they're just about, that's, you know, that's way longer than it was when it went in, but it had a couple little roots that all, went all the way to the back. And what that does is um, those roots will grow down the back of this media. You see how dense that, that root material is back here. And, uh, you know, on this one you can kind of see too uh, just how dense that root material is in the back super high surface area. I don't, I don't even want to know what the surface area is in these things. 
uh, once the biological surface area, once that rip material gets going. So you do see that it does collect um, algae. Uh, that's what some of this is. Well, that's algae and nitrifying bacteria and all sorts of good stuff. So those roots then grow through here and they stay real healthy because this is uh, in a real aerobic environment for them. Um, but that sludge gets caught in there, that uh, algae gets caught in there, and those worms, like that little guy there, just cruise through here and eat, 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 and poop, 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 and those plants just uh, suck that stuff up. So uh, that's what it looks like on the inside. I pretty much uh, decided to kill these inserts as far as nitrifying go bacteria goes, just so you guys get a chance to see what uh, the inserts look like on the inside. So. That's uh, about it for today. I guess the biggies are to remember when you incorporate strawberry rootstock, to incorporate it so that that rootstock is, is going backwards and downwards. Um, basically, so when the, media, when the water comes down that media, it hits those roots and instead of dripping forward onto your crowns, which honestly, you know, I didn't have problems with, but that's not to say you won't. Um, it runs down those roots to the back and you develop this real thick, good uh, root mat along the back of your towers. Well, there it is again, all dirty, but completely pulled and put back in with the rootstock pulled out. Um, that's it for today. I'm going to hang this guy back up. I just store him in the system. If I don't got plants in them, at least they're hanging out and the, that nitrifying bacteria is happy and uh, working away for me. So uh, that's it for today. It's Nate Story signing off. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you check out my site on uh, aquaponicgardening.com, uh, well, aquaponicgardening.ning.com or on uh, backyardaquaponics.com, uh, the forum.